Nation, Bomb Squad, Ramley. I'm here, baby. We got Cleveland. We're gonna win this game. We're gonna beat their ass. We're gonna beat their ass. I'm, I'm claiming it already. But we, we about to beat the, up the Browns, man. It's on me to play well. I will play well. I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna play well. You know, get a couple of sacks. I don't know who the tackle is and I'm going against, but I'm, I'm gonna kill him. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna set us up to, to win this game for sure. This is where things start to get interesting. First of all, I didn't kill anybody. <laughs> I didn't even get a sack in the game. I actually got hurt in the game. And uh, everything just went crazy after after that. I did this in 2018. I said, I went out there, I said, hey, we're gonna beat their ass. That's all I got to say, we're gonna beat their ass. And then I walked out the stage. And it worked. We went out there and we killed the Cardinals. We killed the Cardinals of 45 to 10. And I just remember how the attitude around the facility changed when I did that. So I talk a little shit, right? I talk a little shit before, you know, I get up there and I say, I'm gonna have a great game. I don't know who I'm going against. Cause honestly, I, I, I didn't know who I was against. Like these tackles, they weren't their starting tackles. I have a lot of respect for these guys after, the play, after playing them, of course. You know? Honestly, it didn't matter if the starters played or not. I wanted to create this game and I wanted my teammates to see this animosity. And I wanted my teammates to see that I made it personal. I didn't put it on them, I put it on myself and it didn't work. I went out there and I, got, I actually got hurt <laughs> in the game. And uh, we lost the game, I didn't get any sacks. Um, I didn't play the, the whole second half. I go back and I got a weekend for the treatment. So, um, so really my last play as a Bronco was me getting hurt versus the Browns after I said I was going. <laughs> After I said, I was going to kill him, the irony. <laughs> you know, I come back. I actually had a, a golf trip planned the next day. I was supposed to like leave to Arizona. Because we had like a three-day period. So I was supposed to leave to Arizona at 5 a.m. Golf in Arizona. And do all of these wonderful things. And I ended up getting hurt. So it worked out because, you know, instead of going to Arizona, I got to see my son. Which, seeing my son, whenever I have a chance to see my son, I'm going to do that. It's, it trumps everything anyway so I, I get hurt i come back i gotta go to treatment but i end up getting val you know kicking him with val all day val went crazy this day being the dad that i am i figured it out you know figured it out but he was like going crazy i had to take up his onesie he was hot come on. like real tears was coming out like he started turning red come on, bro. Come on. And it was just making me real, real nervous. I actually thought about calling like 911, you know. But I didn't call anybody. I figured it out. You know, I, I just walked with him down the hallway. Every time I got in the hallway, he would calm down. You know, he would still be kind of fussy, but he would calm down. And, you know, I just kind of figured it out. But I had vowed this whole entire day, which is a fun day, you know, for me. I had a, I had a great time, you know. And whenever I can create these moments with my son, I want to do it, so. Man, I can't sleep without you, man. Yeah, man. I, you know, I couldn't golf. I was, I was hurt, but you know, I decided to like hit some balls uh, in the yard. You know, I had enough room to make like a, a short like part three course. That one in the yard though, over the top. And <laughs> you know, I did, man. I hit some good shots. And I hit some bad shots. That was my car? I think I might need a sunroof in one of my cars, but you know, I had to get my golf fix in. I had my 64 degree wedge out. And this is a shot that you need on the course, and it's a shot that I can practice in my yard. So I just had my 64 degree wedge, and I was just uh, working it. We go to rehab that Sunday, and then on um, Monday, we have the Halloween party. Even though we lost, you know, we still had this Halloween party because we already had money invested in this Halloween party. And um, the Halloween party is always a great time. <laughs> so I asked the guys if they want to have a Halloween party. So we are having this Halloween party. 
even know we lost. Well, you know, they told me to bring my cowboy hat. It's not really a costume, it's who I am. This is the third annual Von Miller Halloween party. And um, even though the season is not going how we want it to go, I still believe in team camaraderie. You know, and I feel like it'll pull us out of whatever slump that we're in. We just gotta come closer together as, as teammates, as brothers. We gotta lock in, have laser focus. It's our last hoorah. And then tomorrow we on punishment. And we're gonna turn this around, man. We're gonna turn it around. We're gonna turn it around. Believe me. To have great parties like this, you have to plan these things. You just can't do it at the last minute. So we actually started planning this Halloween party way, way back in the summer. I'm dressed as Guy Fieri. My favorite Halloween candy is a Kit Kat on top of a Reese's. Favorite Halloween candy, candy corn, nobody know about that. Dressed as a pimp named Slickback, like a child called Question, say the whole thing. Halloween party was a great time, man. Um, everybody was there, I was cowboy. Did the Halloween party, stayed up all night, went to treatment at like six o'clock in the morning. And you know, I stayed up a little bit to make it to treatment. I didn't want to go to sleep because I didn't want to miss treatment. That's just, sometimes you have to make sacrifices like that. So we go during the week, I don't have an ankle. So the training guys, they just had me out the whole time. They just had me out and we were just doing like soft tissue stuff, really just trying to get it to calm down. We didn't like stress it at all. We probably got in the pool a couple of times. You know, but we didn't like press it at all. We were going to the game, which wound up being my last like game as a Bronco, and I didn't even play. You know, I go to the game. It was a great game. Um, I think everybody was motivated to win this game versus a, a Washington Redskins team, and they play everybody tough. We all felt like we couldn't lose it. Justin had two sacks, Malik had two sacks, everybody had sacks. You know, we, we almost fumbled the game away. We literally did almost fumble the game away the last, you know, series of the game. But we still managed to win, and which was a great time, it was a great feeling. The next morning, I go to the facility just like any other day. It's just a, it's just a regular day. Um, Normal day at Dove Valley, I go in there. Um, I actually had uh, was talking to Vince, and I was telling Vince that I needed to get my family COVID test so I can go see my son because we had just had a party, and I just wanted to COVID test everybody to make sure everybody was good. I go into the facility, and I was there. I was there for like an hour. We working. I'm thinking in my mind, I'm gonna practice on Wednesday. We start working and getting it right. Vince came up to me. And he was like, "Hey, George, I want to talk to you?" I was like, "Whoa." George want to talk to me. George Payton want to talk to me on the Monday, the day before the trade deadline. <laughs> so, like, my mom just went crazy. Like, damn, this is really happening. Like, what? My heart started beating real fast. My heart started beating real fast. And, like, every single step was just so light. It felt like I was going to the principal's office, for real. Like, <laughs> or everything. Like, I did not like it. I didn't like it at all. I didn't like it at all. I like the feeling. You know, being in the league 11 years, you see this happen, like, all the time. But for, to send somebody to come get me, I got to go upstairs. You know, I go talk to George, and I sit down, he closed the door, because there's a button to close all the doors at Dove Valley when you get in there, so it's like, in the back cave, he closed the door and start talking. First, he asked me how my ankle was doing, is it better? So like, tell him about my ankle. You know, woo -woo. He, he was worried about my health, you know, he I talked to him about it. And um, he said, well, I just want to let you know that we are trading you. And when he said trading you, it, right after he said the Los Angeles realm, but, I had like a split second where I was like, damn, where am I going, bro? Like, he just said he's trading. Is this real? Like, he just said he's trading me. I didn't, I woke up that morning and I didn't, it was a regular day for me. I did not think that I was gonna get traded. I didn't, I didn't have the slightest idea. It was really like a surprise. And then to the Los Angeles Rams of all teams, like, this team is stacked already without me. I, I say it's like pulling out a splinter, you know, they pull out the splinter. They put they pull out the splinter and it hurts so bad. Like I was so sad, man. I, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to retire like a Denver Bronco. But you can't really you can't stay there. You know, you can't stay there and sad and depressed. You just gotta keep it moving. That's what trades do. You get traded to a new team. Now you're on a new team. Like I still miss my teammates. I miss I'm gonna miss Broncos country forever. 
I love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And, and really, I didn't even have enough time to like say a proper like goodbye to you guys. And what is a proper goodbye to a team that you spent like 11 years with? You know, I did the video. That was like two hours. I wanted to at least have some time to think about it. That was like two hours um, after I got released. Right outside, when I leave the facility, it's a news crew. And I was just thinking to myself, like, you want to drive by, like, and just be like, you know, but I was just like, man, like, this is the last time I'm going to see these guys. Like, all of these guys, man, I have relationships with all the media, all of these guys. So I see Troy out there, and um, I was like, man, all right, this is going to be tough, but let me try to talk to Troy. And I actually almost started crying. Like, I was choking up. I had already been crying the whole time in the facility. Like, <laughs> Bro, like this is, I'm 32 years old crying, bro. It was, it was a tough situation. You know, to say goodbye and just short notice to everybody in there, man. It was, you know, it was tough, man. It was tough. But talk to Troy, go home. Still, still in shock, bro. Like I'm still in shock. Melvin came over, Spence came over, b Mac came over. You know, I talked to those guys and it just, it didn't feel real. Like it just felt like a movie. Yeah, so I got everybody over at the crib. Got B-Mac talking to B-Mac, saying my goodbyes. And I look outside and I see the fireplace on fire. I, I wanted to go see, like, what's going on? Why are you burning stuff? Like, the day I'm getting traded, like, two hours after I get traded, I look outside, are you burning stuff? Like, why do you have to burn whatever you're burning, like, right now? So I asked her, what is she burning? She says, papers. She says like, she's burning papers. I'm like, what? Like in my mind, you know, I'm, I've come to a point now, like it's just certain battles that I don't want to like fight. Like my mom's out there burning papers. All right, cool. Like it could be, <laughs> it could be worse stuff than my mom could be doing. Even though like my mom burning stuff, you like, bro, what's going on? But like she burned it, <laughs> she burned it. And it was, it was crazy. It, it even got crazy. She had to get the water and like, you know, go like, you know, put it out some, but you know, it was a, uh, it was, it was a crazy day, bro. It was, it was really a crazy day. Nah, they probably think it's uh, jerseys. I ain't finna burn shit. I done bought. They put some old clothes. All my Denver stuff still gonna be with me. So I, I get traded and like, he got 24 hours. Like I gotta be in LA the next morning at eight o'clock in the morning. So I have to get a flight. You don't really have time to do anything. Like you just gotta pack up as many bags as you can. You can't like just move your whole crib. But I just packed up, you know, drawers and like stuff that I needed, like and some clothes that I needed. But you know, I get to go LA, get to go shop, get to go grab clothes. I'm going through my house. Didn't really get to, you know, say my goodbyes. I hop on a plane. I told myself like, hey, I'm leaving the Denver Bronco, but I'm gonna land the Los Angeles round. It was early in the morning, so I fell asleep on the plane. <laughs> I wake up in Los Angeles and right when I land, you got cameras and like, you know, people taking pictures, man. They, man, they, they welcome me with like open arms, man. It was, it was great. Like it was, it was, uh, it was exciting to like be like, wanted and like to have people excited for you to be there, man. And people were excited for me in Denver. Like, you know, it, it, you know, people were excited in Denver, you know, but it just got to a point where it's like, hey, you know, it's just Vaughn Miller. I see him every day, you know, to a point where like, damn, like, Vaughn well, Miller's on the team, and it just it just felt really good, man. LA really showed me you know, so much love from the first point where I landed. It was dope. So I land, first thing I had to do was go take a physical. You know, they had to see how my ankle was, had to check out other injuries that I had. So I take this physical, and I had to do like four MRIs, three or four MRIs. The MRIs take 45 minutes. So I was laying on my bed just, <laughs> just, just taking pictures of everything. You know, I pass the physical, I go straight to the facility. I go straight to the facility to get rehab of my ankle. Like I didn't, I didn't even want to go to the hotel. I just wanted to go straight to the facility, rehab my ankle, checking out the facility, checking out my locker. Coach McVay, right off the bat. Coach, you <laughs> got to meet all these guys. Got to meet that, and it started to get sweeter. You know, you, you walk around, all the sad things was going, was they were done. <laughs> they were done. I'm a Los Angeles Ram it was time to get to work. Like we playing Tennessee Titans this week and I gotta learn the playbook right now and I gotta make sure my ankle's good right now. So hit the ground running. Yeah, man, so this has been a crazy couple of weeks, man. This has been a unique vlog because it captured my transition from the Browns to the Halloween party, to not playing the game, 
to getting traded, to getting here in my first couple of days is Los Angeles Ram. So if you guys like this content, it drops every single Thursday and you don't want to miss it. Please don't forget to subscribe. And I see this all the time on YouTube, but we live off these subscribers, baby. And if you like this stuff, subscribe for your blog. Being vlogs.